always tell them to kind of go that maybe that cloud support role because most of the time, unlike doing help desk, cloud support is a little bit more technical and will take you a little farther in your expertise versus doing help desk. So can you briefly talk about what did you, well, if you can kind of remember, but what did you do as like working cloud support? And it basically is incident response. You know, a lot of incident response. So a lot of blacklisting IPs, whitelisting IPs, um, and I, which I had to learn even what that was. On the, a lot, the thing about cloud support engineer is it gives you a lot of grace in not knowing a lot of technicalities of cloud technology and on-premise technology. Though, um, and doing the job requires both because you're going to have to learn how to SSH into machines or RDP into machines to debug on the command line, um, how to run um, DF commands and print, print out utilization reports. So that cloud support role is a lot of just um, reporting metrics on how resources are doing or, or finding causality of why resources are failing in the cloud and present those um, uh, issues to the client along with the solution to the client. And in most cases, especially in my case, we had big enterprise clients. I mean, some of the largest companies in the world. And, you know, at the time it was like, a, like Coca-Cola was one of our biggest clients. Um, and um, um, we, you present these solutions to them. And, but most of it, like a lot of people, you know, get scared of timid of cloud support roles. Most of your, the, most of everything that you're going to have, like they give you scripts. So you're not like coming out with these commands on your own. You're not doing everything alone. You're not figuring everything out from scratch. Every, everything, they have some type of tools for you, some type of automation tools for you. All you got to do is implement. They really need bodies in the seat that can communicate uh, cloud resource issues when needed. But in the most time, most of your, your tasks are mundane tasks. Like you're doing the same thing repetitively around the clock. You know, uh, again, um, I was just printing out incident reports, uh, whitelisting, blacklisting IPs, restarting EC2s that were failed. Uh, doing the uh, status checks, um, 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 handling IMs for incoming engineers uh, or um, decomming engineers who are leaving the organization, et cetera. So just things of that sort, you know, throughout, you know, throughout the day on the ticketing system. And so the difference is with a cloud support role, most any cloud supports roles versus engineer roles is you're more so working on a timed, excuse me, a timed ticketing system versus uh, in the engineering world, you kind of, you got, you, you're working on a task and that task really isn't time constraint based on a response. Like you might have a day or two or even a week to work through a task versus in a support role, you literally might have like up to maybe 15 minutes to respond to a ticket and uh, about 30 minutes to respond with a solution to that ticket. Again, you're not, coming with it all off of scratch. You're using your scripts and right. tools that they give you to find, to, to create the solutions. Um, and you're presenting the, the problem and the solution to the client um, so that they can make well-informed um, decisions and communicate that to the TAM, the technical account manager, about what changes they want to make to their environment so they don't have these issues reoccur. So basically that was it. But cool. it, and then it exposed me to different technologies. I had to learn a it taught me how to work with SSO. I, I work with uh, OK Octa. I work with, uh, again, Linux. I work with PowerShell. Like all these things I wasn't the customer working with, you know, in my, in my previous help desk role. So Nice. It's funny enough that you said a TAM and all that, because if, if anybody's ever studied for, you know, the cloud practitioner or AZ900, you hear those terms all the time. And so now you see the practicality of that in real time right here. And what that role gave you is what I like to call foundation. Absolutely. So now you can go do anything in the clouds you pretty much want to because your foundation is solid. Yep. You're working under the hood of the cloud. Literally, mm -hmm. when resources break down, you have to go investigate, find out where, where the resource is located, um, how it broke down, and kind of restore that resource, how to restore the service. You know, because you got to get that cloud back up and running. Um, and you can be working in a non-production environment or production environment. In most cases, if you're a newbie coming on, unless you're working a prime shift, you're not working in a production environment. They're gonna put you in another production environment. So like it's room, a lot of room for mistakes and errors. You know, cloud support engineers are very, um, um, some very forgiving roles. And I say that most um, engineers, most newbies who wanna make the break into cloud should immediately try to step into cloud support roles. It's the help desk of the cloud. Um, 
except you get more of the, you get, it's more lucrative offer. You make a little bit more money or whatever, but, um, but you know, you, you get, you gain a ton of cloud technical experience, the technical aspect, and you get to learn what other cloud avenues you want to go down because you're working in a centralized role that's responsible for many parts of the cloud. So you're working with, um, getting to understand and communicate often with network engineers, because you're dealing with the, the cloud network. You're also working with storage and engineers because you're dealing with storage. You're working with the TAM. You learn about what a TAM is. Um, you, you just find out and you kind of it's like, hmm, which one of those pathways are most interesting for me to pursue after this cloud support role? It kind of helps you create a clearer vision for where you want to go, you know, for the next three, four years of your career. So yeah, great place to start.